pleased to be joined by Daniel LeBlanc of uh, Acady Man fame. And we've got the new one right here, Acady Man. This one, we're going to be talking about this one in just a little bit. Uh, but uh, first off, we're going to hit up where we left off with uh, Acady Man. Here's a little clip. Watch so good. Some stick right on the cord, frick. Désolé, c'est tellement coincé ici. Holy Chris! Qu'est-ce que bête c'est? Ça sent mort dans nos C'est pas moi. Moi non plus. Techniquement, une patate génétiquement modifiée ne peut en aucune circonstance péter, comme tu le dis. Excusez-moi. Ça doit être de la zingue au bord d'eau. We'll chat one next time. Pas tout. Holy! Freak my brain the louder edge the deep space. Hey, Cocky! I can't even! Cause you face it, my doors! Cause you face it, Plaz! She ain't fair that well! Moi too! Hey! Sit you see a Tom just the spaceship is it? Hello to the moon! Moi, je suis Jerry Cormier, former anchorman de TV Acadie. Puis je suis ici pour vous dire qu'on est tous stuck sur un spaceship puis on flotte dans l'outer space. So, freak it out! Ça a l'air que les Américains ont taken over les provinces maritimes puis ils ont décidé de nous déporter une second time. Ça, ça suce. So, à ce il faut qu'on figure out comment back se rend en Acadie. Anyway, ce site, c'est Jerry Cormier qui vous souhaite une bonne fête. So, be me moi, puis on soit au bac bientôt. I hope. All right, so that's where we left Acadie Man uh, last we saw him, but we've got this, which has got a little bit of a, you know, we get to see what happens with Acti Manor a little bit anyway. So, Daniel LeBlanc, thank you so much for joining us uh, tonight. Uh, certainly uh, very excited. So, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Very good. So, so we go from there to this. Yes. Which is so very cool. I can give that to you. You can eight take a little tour later. of your own, your own thing. That's right. Eight years later. So, what, what made you want to come back to the, to, the Acti Man, uh, to the Acti Man franchise, I guess would be a way to put it? Um, I, actually, I, I wasn't expecting to come back at all, to be mm. honest. Um, I had a friend of mine, the guy who, who uh, basically um, produced the first two comics for me. He was like the editor or, or whatever, and he um, he started doing color uh, for comics. He had made his own comic a few years ago, and he called me up uh, just after Christmas this year and said, uh, "What do you think of doing a new Akademian comic? I, I need practice coloring." <laughs> <laughs> so I said, "Okay." And uh, just like that, I started, and I was done probably a month and a half later. So, so that's is that uh, now for some of us who may not necessarily know the the turnaround time in terms of making a comic is that very fast or did it kind of come together really quick or did, did it uh, take a little bit to put together? Well, it depends what kind of work you're putting into it. Um, the drawing style I did in the comic is is done for color so there's not a lot of shading and not mm. a lot of detail and I knew we wanted to get it released for the ECCE which is the East, East Coast, Coast Comic, comic Expo, Expo which was a couple weeks ago I believe. a couple weeks ago yeah. so we knew we had to work fast so that was another incentive for us basically just to get it yeah. out there yeah and I mean if I were to work on say something more elaborate like a longer graphic novel or something I would probably work harder on the <laughs> on the drawing but I don't particularly enjoy illustrating. Mm. I'm not an illustrator per se, I think. I, I prefer the writing side of it. Mm -hmm. So if I could find somebody to illustrate for me, I'd be really happy, you know, who could draw better than I do. But uh, Well, you I, heard that, so contact us, Hub City Now on Facebook, and <laughs> get the word out. If we can find an illustrator for this man, he can write a little bit more. So what was it like to pick up the, the Acadie Man character again for the first time in, in what would be around eight years, I suppose? It was um, surprisingly easy. Um, his voice is, I think, an, it's like a, a voice that I discovered as a writer, and so it's it's there and it's always going to be there. So it's really easy for me to go back mm. and do it. And once you know the characters, 
it's really easy to write for it, you know, because they all have their own kind of archetypes or, or whatever. So it was it was it was quite easy, surprisingly enough. And I had just moved back to Dieppe. I had been gone for a couple of years. I was living in uh, Nova Scotia, and uh, moving back to Dieppe. I was starting to notice all kinds of things, you know, just like how the city was getting bigger and just noticing little things here and there about about the city itself. And so a lot of it was inspired by that, I think, by having been gone outside into a place where there was no French hardly mm -hmm. to coming back to living. It was the first time I lived in a non-French environment. I'd lived in Montreal and I'd lived here. So coming back to it, I think, inspired this story more than anything. Right, and that's, well, and even you look at Dieppe and just being gone for, for a couple of years or four yeah. or five years, it's grown so much since, since the last it. time you would have been here. That's it, so that, that was, it was pretty crazy uh, for me, like to, when I came back, you know, um, and a lot of the stories about that, the comic is half English, half French, and, you know, obviously Akademen is Shiak, so he speaks Shiak. But the story is basically uh, an Anglophone family that gets lost in Dieppe and they can't find their way out and they're, they're a little bit uh, xenophobic because they're not used to such a French environment. Mm. And uh, so Akadiman basically helps them escape out of Dieppe. So it's kind of a take on escape from New York a mm. little bit. Like if you see the cover, it's, it's kind of like a, a pastiche of the poster for Escape from New York. So it's a little take on that. Right. So, so when when we talk about this new comic, and you've mentioned that this is, you know, you did it to help your help your buddy illustrate a little bit more. And then, uh, is there expected to be more from Akadi Man in the future? Do you see do you see reprising the character again, or is this kind of a what do you see for the future of Akadi Man? I think um, I'm really into it right now. I love doing it. I really enjoyed it. And now that the printing. Um, has changed, like uh, technology has advanced so much that now I can print a small run of comics mm. and it's a lot less expensive, so it's easier for me to do it on my own than before, even eight to ten years ago when I did the last one, because then I'd have to produce about, you know, almost like two to three thousand comics for the price to come down enough for it to make sense to sell it as a comic. You know, I'm not going to sell a 16 page comic for $12 or something, mm. you know, because the printing was so expensive. But now that the technology has changed, it, uh, it's a lot cheaper and I can keep doing it. So yeah, I'm actually inspired right now to keep going. So I probably will. All right, so we'll have to have a look and see what, what new adventures await for, for Acuity Man, whether he's helping out English folks in Dieppe or yeah. whatever, whatever the next inspiration I, is. The next inspiration is probably related to fecal matter at the Parley Beach area, <laughs> something like just, that. Just keep ripping from the headlines. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we see an appearance from Victor Boudreau, perhaps. M yeah, maybe. 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 maybe if he hadn't have backed out. <laughs> well, <laughs> who knows, right? But, yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, so, so do you find a lot in your writing style in terms of Acadie Band and people who've seen the show? Do you rip a lot from from current events, or is it just kind of whatever's going on uh, in the head at the time? It depends. Like, it depends uh, what it is and if it's related somehow to the the kind of philosophy behind what I'm doing. You know, there's like a, a definite socio linguistic thing going on in the comics, and it's more about that than it is about other things. I've always been kind of uh, uh, satirizing the area, you know, uh, if it's tourism or whatnot, just things, you know, that I see and notice in everyday life. So this one is very much concentrated on Dieppe. So like, uh, I've been hearing a lot of things from different people over the last few years while I was gone. Like people are saying that now the kids in Dieppe um, the slang is not taken from English as much anymore. It's taken from, uh, it's like French slang that they're using. Okay. Because the influence of people from up north who are moving down into Dieppe. Yeah, the New Brunswick Rite of Passage, yeah. Exactly. And uh, <laughs> there's also, some people are calling it Petit Quebec now, or Little Quebec. Mm. So, and it is the that largest. That one's been in the headlines, too. Yeah, <laughs> and, it's, and it's, uh, it's the largest city outside of Quebec that's a francophone city, you know. Mm. So I kind of deal with all, all of that stuff, and that's kind of what's, I guess, current now 
and kind of talk a little bit about technology as well and how that's changed. I kind of have a few jokes related to that. Right. So, Academia and Comics, uh, you can get this right now? Yes. It's yes. at Comic Hunter. So, go look at Comic Hunter right here, Academia.